Hello everyone, this is Yu Hui from USTC. I'm going to share our work, Gradient Compression Supercharged High Performance Data Paradigm Training. This is a joint work with folks from University of Nevada Reno and the Nokia Bell Labs. As DN model training is research hungry, data parallel is a major approach of parallelizing DN training over a large number of GPUs and has been adopted in popular DN systems like TensorFlow, MaxNet, and PyTorch. In data parallel training, each GPU node maintains a model replica and trains that replica on its own data partition. Gradients will be produced and synchronized among all nodes when processing a mini-batch of data to trigger the following training steps. Obviously, computing time decreases when adding more GPU nodes. However, communication overhead would increase and may eventually offset the power of increasing computing capacity. Is communication a real bottleneck in data parallel training, given the existence of a high bandwidth network? To answer this question, we use up to 128 GPUs to train the VGG-19 model with the two most popular, highly optimized data parallel architectures, Hubbard PS and the Horror World. We measure the change of scaling efficiency with different number of GPUs and observe a significant drop in when scaling the cluster size. Unfortunately, this communication computation tension cannot be easily addressed by network upgrade due to the following reasons. First, in recent years, the size of the model increases fast, implies that there is more data to be transferred. Second, Computation capacity advances faster than bandwidth means gradients will be synchronized more frequently. These points will worsen the tension. Fortunately, gradient compression is an active research point and the general approach to address the tension. The gradient compression algorithms use the characteristics of gradient matrix to compress, a potential to substantially reduce transmitted data volume. For example, the algorithm DGC has a compression ratio of 0.1%. They often fall into two categories. One is specification, which leverages the sparsity of gradients and fills out the insignificant elements. The other one is quantization, which decreases the precision of each element. Many of these algorithms either theoretically prove or empirically validate that they impose only a negligible impact on training accuracy. So, can the SOTA gradient compression address the communication bottleneck? We use one bit, one open source compression algorithm to evaluate the performance gain of compression for VGG19 model. One bit algorithm can significantly reduce the transport data volume but the synchronization ratio reduction and the end-to-end -end scaling efficiency speed-up are much lower than expectation. Apparently, there is a big gap between theoretical speed-up and actual performance. How to minimize it? The first system challenge we met is how to hide the compression cost along synchronization. In the two popular synchronization architectures, pin reduce and permit to solve, the compression cost stems from the fact that it's impossible to directly aggregate compressed gradients. Thus, at every data transmission step, a decode operator must follow message receiving and precede aggregation. In addition, newly created gradients must be encoded before sending out. As you may notice, this gradient synchronization is global and consists of many small steps. Enabling compression would introduce up to 3 and minus 2 extra operators to ring or reduce and permit to solve. However, the current design of the two architectures fails to hide this non negligible overhead. First, ring or reduce takes bulk synchronization to complete two times the difference and minus 1 communication and aggregation steps all at once, precluding the chance to pipeline comp compression and communication. For parameter solver, it enables such pipeline, but experiences less parallelism and resource inefficiency due to uncoordinated communication. Third, sort of optimization such as batching, partition, and balancing are all compression unaware. Therefore, it requires us to rethink the new system designs for compression aware gradient synchronization strategies.
Equally important, there are many compression algorithm proposals needing great manual efforts to implement and optimize them atop GPU one by one. After that, practitioner is to integrate the algorithm code into synchronization architectures and DN systems to make data parallel training compression aware. This requires significant system expertise. Undoubtedly, it's difficult for general practitioner to do this. To address about challenges, we aim to provide a high-performance compression-aware synchronization strategy and easy-of-use compression algorithm developing toolkits. We believe this will be quite beneficial to develop and practically apply gradient compression algorithms in, in data parallel DN training. To address challenge one, hiding compression costs along synchronization, we split the gradient synchronization path into multiple fine-grained primitives. Encode and decode are compression-related operators. Send and receive are com communication-related operators. Computation and communication operators are scheduled and managed by different task queues, and then executed asynchronously, providing more opportunity for pipelining. Second, we propose a cross-grained bulk synchronization approach, which relies on a global coordinator to collect gradient metadata from workers or aggregators, and to batch gradients per network link to better utilize per link bandwidth, and choose non-conflict links for data transmission to simultaneously use the upstream and downstream bandwidth of each node. This bulk synchronization is general to different synchronization architectures, such as ring or reduce or parameter server. Third, we employ a selective compression and partitioning mechanism to decide whether to compress each gradient and how to partition large gradients before compression to optimally leverage pipelining and parallel processing. To address challenge two, lack of system support for gradient compression algorithms, we analyze popular gradient compression algorithms and abstract seven common operators and implement and highly optimize them on GPU. Practitioners can use these highly optimized common operators to assemble their algorithms. For easy of use, we provide a C-like domain-specific language for users to describe the logic of their algorithm. Then description can be translated by compiler into highly optimized GPU code. Finally, Algorithms must use the unified APIs to interact with the rest of training components. Finally, we put casing and compare together to compose a high performance and easy to use compression aware DN training framework named HyperX. HyperX can run on mainstream DN systems such as MaxNet, TensorFlow, and PyTorch and provides a high level API for users launch data power during training and exercise different gradient compression algorithms. We intensively evaluate HyperX to answer the question, can HyperX enable faster development and offer high performance? We take lines of code for both implementation and integration of gradient compression algorithms to measure the development effort. Take one bit algorithm as an example. Open source version requires 18 and 445 lines to implement the logic and the system integration, respectively. But compare only use total 13 lines. Our performance evaluation shows that the auto-generated code can outperform their open source version by up to 35 times. So, compare can significantly relieve the implementation and the development efforts. We then measure the end-to-end -end training throughput. We train three different popular DN models atop three different DN systems. We find that HyperX improves the training speed over both current no compression and compression enabled baseline systems. To wrap up, in this talk, we show that parallel DN training faces a severe gradient synchronization bottleneck. Gradient compression algorithm can help, but its practical speed up are far behind their theoretical expectation. To this end, we address the system challenges and build a generic, high-performance, compression-aware and easy-to-use data parallel framework named HyperX. HyperX has been open-sourced. Thanks for your attention.